I want to do a really quick tutorial on how to do colour infills on cuts. Um, I don't do them very often myself anyway, um, and I'm definitely not the expert, but I thought I'd show you how I do them when I do them. Um, I quickly sketched out and did a little fish this morning, uh, nothing too fancy, but I would like to put a colour behind him. Um, some people decide to colour infill when they've actually finished doing a cut, so they'll do a whole cut, decide it needs something else, and then do a colour infill. And I can say all credit to those people, I can't do it that way, um, it's very fiddly, it can be done, it can be achieved, it's just not something that I have the skills uh, to do. I always decide to do my colour infill from the beginning, so I know at the start that I'm going to need a colour infill. So if I've hand sketched it, um, I'll decide which bits before I ever go on to do any cutting need the infill. And I start off by tracing the bits that need the infill. Now I trace both lines, the outside line and the inside line, so that I've got a guide here in between as to which bits I need to, to cut. So then I would trace that onto my coloured piece of paper using the outside line and then when I go to cut it I will cut between the two lines so that I know it's not going to go over the outside line or under the inside line. Theoretically that should give you exactly the right size to cut. If I'm doing it on a computer um, and my design is on a computer I'll print it out twice and use the same guidelines to cut the second piece. Um, obviously printing the second piece on the colour that you want it to be. Um, if you're going to do that and you want lots of different colours I would recommend that you print it twice still but print the second piece on white paper and trace the bits that you want to do and put those traces onto um, the colours that you want them to be on so that you're not wasting too much ink. Um, I would never trace onto my original piece because the pencil line can show through so I would avoid doing that if you can. Uh, so I've traced that piece and I've traced it onto a piece of orange card and as you can see here I've stuck a tiny little piece of removable sticky tape. I don't want a lot and I don't want it to rip my original piece, it's just to hold it in place so I'm not going to really press down on it, I don't want it to hold permanently, I just want it to be there. I'll just drop this down so you can see the, the cut, there we go. So my cut is in reverse, there's the right way. That's it, and then I'm just going to place this on top, line it up with your original cut so it's not showing on the outer edges, there we go, and I'm just going to put that piece of sticky tape onto my board. It's just holding it in place, that's all I need to do at the, this point. This is the glue that I'm currently using. I've been through probably every glue you can probably buy. I got this from Paper Chase, it's a scotch. The main thing to remember with your glue is make sure it's acid free. That's what you want to um, achieve at the end because if you use a glue that isn't acid free, it'll damage the paper over time. Uh, and then I use cocktail sticks. Some people use the blades, uh, which is great if your blade needs changing. Um, and I just take the little bits that are in the lid. You need tiny, tiny amounts of glue for this. So I just dip the cocktail stick in, make sure I haven't got any excess. And I'm just going to lift that piece. You may need to use your blade to lift it because it's lighter. And I'm just going to dab bits of glue on the inside line of the piece that I've done. You only need small amounts. You don't want it showing and you don't want it to ruin either the infill or your lower piece. When you have the bigger chunks, I've got the stripes on the bottom of my fin here you can put a little bit more on those pieces you can be a bit more generous and you're just dotting the glue around like so make sure you get it in enough places and that's it place it down and just hold it down firmly for a while now obviously you're going to take more time and care than I've just done on this piece just to show you how I would do it and then using your blade you're going to slowly lift that piece of tape get rid of it now you've got to be really careful make sure you don't use the permanent one you want the one that's removable you get them in craft stores the range anywhere like that if you use normal sellotape 
it's going to tear your original piece of paper and your original cut and you're going to have to start again which I'm sure we could all do without so then where you've had your tape just go in and place a tiny dab of glue so that you've got it everywhere and with any luck you should have a colouring film now there's probably better ways of doing it as I say I'm not an expert at colouring fills I don't do them very often that's how I do it um, people I'm sure will comment and come up with alternative ways that's how I've always done them um, they don't look quite so pretty from the other side uh, and that's okay because hopefully nobody's going to take your cut to pieces and have a look at it but it's a good starting point hope that's helped uh, and good luck with them all thanks for watching bye